Let's talk about Trigger. Properties of triangles. Some, <clears throat> some of the angles in a triangle is 180. For any triangle, some of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. The only triangles you like is pizza? No, I'm pretty sure you like other things. Other triangles. For sure. Triangles come into play everywhere. Do you like music? Trigonometry. Do you like light shows? Trigonometry. Right? Four right angle triangles. A, B, C. Keep in mind there's six pieces of info in a triangle. Pieces of slices aren't triangles. <laughs> they're, they're sectors of a circular uh, circular technology, uh, technology. But they are related to triangles because triangles are related to circles. Right? So triangles definitely are related to pizzas because if pizzas come in circular sizes, they're circular shape, then that's trigonometry as well. Right? Because... And, the unit circle, the way we find ourselves in a coordinate is through triangles, right? The triangle is also the only shape where the sum of the angles are 180. Every other shape is 360. For this reason, triangles have more structural integrity. They have, and they're, that's why you have tripods. Like tripods are stable, more stable. But with triangles, triangles are the building blocks of all polygons right it's like the prime factors of polygons or triangles for example if you have this here's a polygon right what's the sum of the angles of this polygon right tetrahedral <laughs> right well break it down into into its prime building blocks it's just the same thing as H2O, H2O is H2 and O and H and H, right? The building block of H2O is HHO. The building block of 12 is 2 times 6 and 2 times 3, right? <laughs> the building block of this is 1 triangle, 2 triangles, 3 triangles, one two three sorry four triangles right so there are four triangles that this how many shades sides one two three four five six six sided polygon is made of right well what's the sum of the angles in this triangle is 180 times six right you can break all polygons into into triangles and then from there you can work out their angles or whatever it is. If they're regular polygons, this is not to scale, not regular polygon, right? So triangles are your smallest building block of a polygon. That's why they're super important. One of the other reasons they're super important, right? So take a look. Mm, let's kill this as well. Triangle has six sides. Oh, sorry, six bits of information. Y times six. Did I say times six or did I say times four? Oh, I should have said times four. Poop. I made a mistake. That was a brain fart. That was a Chicho brain fart. That should have been 180 times four. There was four triangles, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Chicho brain fart. Correct my brain farts, please. <laughs> okay. I make, I end up making, because I'm mentioning other numbers and other numbers all of a sudden enter the, my calculations. Oops. Don't do that on an exam. Don't do that on homework, right? There's six pieces of info in a triangle, right? Three sides and three angles. And an angle controls the opposite side. So this angle, this guy controls it. So we're going to call this capital B. So this angle is called capital B and it controls 
small case b side right this angle we're going to call a because it controls this side and this angle we're going to call c because it controls that side let's put the a here too so we're consistent right so this angle controls this side this angle controls that side that angle controls that side okay the smallest angle controls the smallest side the medium size angle controls the medium side and the largest angle controls the largest side if you got a right angle triangles the 90 degree angle is the largest side hence c is your longest side okay and don't forget gang free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to uh, I try to bring transparency and accountability of capital's power to humanity. Support him. All right? So in a right angle triangle, we have the following other relationship as well, which is the Pythagorean theorem, right? We got one relationship, angles in all triangles equals 180. Hello, Mac, 650. For a right angle triangle, we have the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's the relationship that exists between A, B, and C. Okay, and C is your hypotenuse. So the two legs of a triangle squared added together equal the hypotenuse squared. That's another property that we have. There are three other properties of a triangle, features of a triangle, right angle triangle that we also deal with. We should call the trig important ratios, right? So three trig ratios ratios right which are sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse cos of an angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse tan of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side okay those are the properties of a right angle of the trig ratios adjacent side mac i never uh, like math do you suggest a book that makes you like math maybe um it really depends what you're into mac what's your interest in life no matter what your interest is in life mathematics can relate to it right if you're interested in business look into mathematics of investing and stuff like this if you're interested in music look into mathematics of trigonometry really frequencies waves and stuff like this if you're interested in engineering there's tons of books out there in engineering um, if you're interested in pure mathematics just look at the algebra as problem solving right we just had a problem we just did a problem where it was complicated it was cool but together we we're able to solve a problem so if you like puzzles mathematics is the place to be right so what do the trig ratios mean ratio is something compared to something else now remember gang there's a difference between a fraction and a ratio fraction and ratio the difference between a fraction and a ratio is this i can give you the following two over three what does two over three mean two over three means part of a whole um interesting in investing yes i like the math and finance but it's simple compared to you are explaining on advanced math. no uh, financial mathematics investing can be extremely complicated some of the most complex mathematics ever done have been in the realm of investing personal finance right you can start off with some simple stuff but it can go into very complicated stuff mathematics is a tool you can build a shed in your backyard or you can build a skyscraper right if you want to do a comparison mathematics is limitless okay and you can apply it into extremely complex uh, levels on any topic even art like paintings and stuff like this hues of colors and play around with that stuff fraction two over three is part of a whole so if i have a whole thing i break it into three pieces i'm gonna eat two of them two out of three 
right two parts of a whole okay thank you sorry for no no worries Mac right as far as math books go again um, I, nothing really comes to mind I have certain math books that I've used to learn certain topics right? if I write down a ratio 2 over 3 ratio 2 over 3 is a comparison of two or more things so 2 over 3 if it's a ratio it means two circles versus two triangles okay it's a comparison right two versus three okay keep that in mind so these trig ratios are not fractions they're ratios it's a comparison of one thing to another thing right and what are these two things comparing well the formula tells us what it's comparing it's saying that the sine of an angle right the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side of that angle divided by the hypotenuse of that angle of that triangle right so i'm going to erase this part okay so trigonometry says this if i have a triangle like this right right angle triangle and these only work for right angle triangles okay okay they don't work for non right angle triangles if this is my theta the sine of theta is the opposite side opposite divided by the hypotenuse height so what does this mean the ratio why is this important well it's important because of the following if I say that let's assume this is 30 degrees right and this is a right angle triangle and let's assume the hypotenuse of this is 5 right I want I want to find this X okay what I'm gonna do is say use this formula to find X this is an absolute it means that it, for any triangle right so let's find here let me just tell you what sine of 30 is sine of 30 degrees if you punch that to your triangle you're gonna get this there's a special triangle called this 30 90 60 1 root 3 2 if you punch in sine of 30 you're gonna get 1 over 2 it's equal to 0 0.5 okay really right here we're gonna punch it in let me punch it in make sure I didn't do any brain farts here 30 degrees and you're gonna go sine of that is 0.5 right so sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 now sine of 30 degrees is not 0.5 just for this triangle or for this triangle sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 for any triangle any try no matter how big it is how small it is i used to hate math growing up until i went to college haha <laughs> yeah a lot of people right so if i give you a triangle like this i say this is 30 degrees and i ask you what the ratio is between this side and this side you will tell me that it's 0.5 the ratio of this side let's call this the opposite side and let's call this a hypotenuse the ratio of this divided by this opposite over hype is equal to 0 0.5 that's what i wrote down here by the way where is it right so if you have one of these you can always find the other one so if the hypotenuse is five you just put five here oops then the opposite side is going to be 0 0.5 times 5 which is 2.5 so we know this is going to be 2.5 
So the ratios, the trig ratios are an absolute okay. for specific angles. It's the relationship of one side of a right angle triangle relative to the other. May it be adjacent versus the hypotenuse, opposite versus the hypotenuse, or opposite versus the adjacent. It could be this divided by that, that divided by that, or this divided by that, or it could be this divided by that, that divided by that, or that divided by that. There's six different combinations you could do with this, right? And that's what the trig ratios are. They're not some people think these are magic they're not right it's just a way of saying instead of saying what's the re what's the ratio between the opposite side of an angle and its hypotenuse that's the definition of sine theta but that's too long right as i've said before mathematicians are some of the laziest people you'll find and they try to simplify things and they end up calling these things sine cosine and tangent where they got those names from i haven't looked into the history where the name came from i hope that's clear is, is that clear does that make sense would you like expanding on that uh i forget who was asked that trigonometry trigonometry i'm just going up to see who asked about the trigs uh, trig ratios and by the way if you already have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So let's assume you have a triangle. Here, let's erase this. Let's assume you have a triangle. You already have the two sides or two sides you're trying to compare. Let's assume you have, this is six and this is uh, 15. And you wanna find angle theta. Well, you wanna find this angle and the two sides that you have is this and this. Remember, if this is a 90 degree triangle, you can always find this just using a Pythagorean theorem, right? But right now we don't care if we're trying to find theta. So if you're trying to find theta, what am I looking at? Mathematics. If you're trying to find theta, well, what sides of this triangle do you have relative to this angle? You have the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So you look at your formulas, you go, which formula has opposite and hypotenuse? Oh, we got this one, opposite and hypotenuse. So just fill in the blanks. So you got sine theta is equal to six over hypotenuse is 15, right? So how do you isolate? Now, the only variable you need to get by itself now is theta. And the way you isolate this on your calculator, you got something called second function of the sine sine inverse so the way you separate the sine and the theta you got theta is equal to sine inverse of 6 over 15 and if you punch that in you'll find out what the angle is and that's the ratio of what the opposite side is relative to the hypotenuse of this angle and if you punch that in here let's punch it in 6 divided by 15 and you go trigonometry second sign is 23.6 degrees so theta is equal to 23.6 degrees so any triangle that has an angle any right angle triangle that has an angle of 23.6 degrees its ratio will always be 6 over 15 which is really 2 over 5.5 four so the relationship between this side relative to this side that divided by that will be 0.4 all right what does that mean what's 15 times 0.4 it's six so the opposite side will always be 0.4 40 percent of the length of the hypotenuse okay no, we only open up a black hole when we divide by zero. If you divide by zero, a black hole pops, boop, and the universe explodes, right? That's where the black hole comes in from, okay? That's what the black hole is. Why can't we travel at the speed of light? Enigma. Why can't we travel at the speed of light? Do you like sci-fi? 
I hope you like sci-fi. Why can't you travel at the speed of light? For anyone that's like Star Trek, Star Wars, any any sci-fi, infinite mass, right? If you try to travel at the speed of light, you get infinite mass. Do you know why you get infinite mass? I'm going to erase this.